Today we are going to the book exchange. Um, I am someone who, if I read a book and I don't enjoy it and want it on my shelves and it doesn't, you know, give me joy to see on my shelves, then I will unhaul it. It doesn't have to be if I dislike a book, you know, it's just if, if I if I have a book and I'm like, eh, I don't, I'm, I don't see myself reading this again, it doesn't feel particularly special to me, then I will unhaul it because goodness knows I have enough books. I have a bunch of books that some I have read, some I've realised that I'm not going to read, some I've DNF'd and I just don't really think I'm going to keep them on my shelves. Some of the books that I do give away I think other people would like to read. Um, so we're going to take them to the book exchange and try not to just replace every single one of these books with more books that I haven't read yet. <laughs> so I'll quickly show you what books that we're taking to the book exchange today and give you a little bit of a reason about I guess why we are unhauling them from the collection. So the first two, these two are actually, I do enjoy these books. Um, I just have two copies of them and I don't see any need to have two copies of them and the people in my life who read books I think already have copies of these as well. So the first is The Handmaid's Tale and the second is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Yeah, I enjoyed both of these books, I haven't read both of them in a really long time, but when there are so many books to read I do not need to have two not particularly special copies of the same book. So these ones are going. A note, sometimes the book exchange won't take all of my books, um, depending on what they kind of have in stock already, um, so we might quickly pop by a thrift store as well to drop off whatever doesn't get taken. Then I have these two, so Temera by Naomi Novik. Um, I started to read this, wasn't really my cup of tea. I would like to give Naomi Novik another try though, because I've heard a lot of good things about her. It just was, I found the main character a bit annoying. I really loved the fact that it was to do with dragons and sailing, because books about dragons and books about the ocean are some of my favourite themes and topics. Um, but you know, there was just a lot of time describing things that I wasn't particularly interested in. It felt like it was going a bit slow. So I got kind of that, maybe that far in um, and I didn't really want to keep going. So that one is going to go to somebody who might enjoy that kind of thing more. And then also this one I, I kind of pointed out when I did my record tour of I might get rid of this one. If I'm honest, I thrifted Goodnight Mr. Tom because I recognised it and I have heard that it is very sad and, and a good book. But if I am honest with myself, I'm probably, this is not a priority for me to read. I'm not dying to read this and I thrifted it mainly because I recognised it. So it would be better to put it in the book exchange for somebody who actually is dying to read it and make a little bit more space on my own shelves. And then uh, there are a couple classics that I'm going to take to the book exchange. I'm someone where I know that these books are good, I know that these classics are good, but I do think with classics you should not force yourself through them if you're not vibing with them because there are certainly classic covers so many different styles of writing and genres and pacing and just because a book is a classic does not mean that you have to enjoy every single one of them and I do have classics that are in my favourite list of books so these two in particular and they don't really do it for me personally so I'm going to put them you know book exchange is a perfect place for classics to go because these I know do do it for other people and will do it for other people I don't know why I'm now using that phrase um, so I'm going to take Hamlet by William Shakespeare read this through I don't think I'm equipped for Hamlet at the moment. I'm happy I read it, I get it, but again I like to have books on my shelf where I look at them and I go yeah that that book you know so I read this and it's not giving me that feeling even though I recognize what a incredible piece of literature it is but it's a perfect candidate to go to a book exchange store um, especially this copy which is so beautiful. And then this one is a little bit sad because I really thought I was going to enjoy this and it is such a beautiful copy. Um, Silas Mana by George Eliot. I loved the beginning of this book. I think George Eliot's writing style is beautiful, but I just found myself absolutely slowing down towards the middle. I feel like it started to drag on a little bit and I am very much so of the opinion that there are too many books to read in this world and not enough time to read them all. So if I'm not feeling a book, then I'm not feeling a book. But I know that some people do absolutely adore Silas Mana, so again, perfect candidate to take to a book exchange store where someone can get it for a bargain price and have a better experience than I did. This one does have beautiful illustrations as well which I'll show you. It's kind of like a wood print cutout sort of situation. It's a very very cool copy and I'm, I'm sad that I didn't enjoy the story as much but again I don't really tend to keep books just for the sake of 
keeping them. Okay, and then this might be a bit of a controversial one depending on what your tastes are. So in my what I've been reading this year video, I talked about my thoughts and feelings about the second two books in Sarah J Maas's um, Crescent City novel. So if you would like a little bit more of an in-depth analysis on how I feel about these books, you can totally head on over there. These are massive books, right? They take up a lot of space. I don't feel joy when I look at them. I found the reading experience a little bit tedious, a little bit frustrating, especially considering how much I love her other series. But again, I know that some people love these books. I know that some people, if they saw these in a book exchange, would lose their minds and be happy to see them. So you know, it's a win-win situation. I get to make more room on my shelf. These don't, I'm not attached to these stories. I don't need them. I'm not gonna read them again. And someone else might love to have them. So these ones are going as well. And then the last one is a bit of a random one. Um, my husband and I were cleaning out this room. We found this one, which is a writing for psychology book. It's more about how to kind of write academically about psychological topics, which neither of us have or are planning to currently go to in kind of the more academical research film uh, field with psychology. I finished my degree, my husband is is finishing. So yeah, these books can be quite expensive sometimes, so I'll take that to the book exchange and maybe another psychology student who has just started their journey and does want to go into research or need some help with more academic tips about how to write about psychology will enjoy. Oh, these beautiful black cockatoos are flying past right now. Oh my gosh! This is the stack of books that I'm taking to the book exchange. Don't know which ones they will want, um, but one way or another, they are leaving my collection today. So let's go. Great success. So, all done. That was so fun. I love the book exchange so much. They always have such really cool stuff in there. So I got $18 credit from the books that I handed in. Uh, I spent $22. <laughs> so this book exchange, it has a system where part of the book um, you can attribute to credit and then you pay the rest. So for one of the books, I think it was, the book was $8 and up to $3.50 or something like that you could put on your credit. So I'm happy with the trade-off. I'm happy with the exchange that has been exchanged. I thought I would give you a very quick look at the books that I got. So this one you probably saw in the clip from the book exchange. Um, it's pretty easy to spot on the shelf. So I picked up Bunny by Mona Awad. This is one of those ones that I was seeing everywhere last year. It was a very kind of like it girl book to read. And I always love to give those books a try and see, okay, why was it everywhere? Is this my cup of tea? So it sounds like this book is about um, a girl called Samantha who is studying at university and gets kind of drawn into this group of three unbearably rich girls who call each other bunny. It gives me, from what I've heard about this book, it, it kind of, it sounds like it's going to be kind of cultish vibes. It says, blending sharp satire with fairy tale 
horror bunnies a spellbinding trip of a novel from one of fiction's most original voices oh and then i was super excited to see this one so this is the life of charlotte bronte by elizabeth gaskell um i have not read anything by elizabeth gaskell yet she's on my list of authors to try but charlotte bronte is one of my favorites and i find her life so fascinating i read villa at the beginning of last year and that was one of those books where when i looked into what charlotte bronte was going through at the time that she wrote villa it felt like villa was really her voice and her feelings and her emotions at that time coming through in the book it was it was like charlotte bronte was speaking to you through the main character who i think is called lucy yeah so i have just been very fascinated with the bronte sisters since then and i love their i love 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 their books they're some of my favorite authors so i am very excited to be able to learn a little bit more. The back says that Elizabeth Gaskell had been Charlotte's close friend in the last years of her life and after her death encouraged by Charlotte's father she relentlessly pursued facts about Charlotte's childhood family and writing to let Charlotte speak for herself through her letters. Yeah, the powerful tribute of one woman writer to another. So I was very stoked to see this one. And then if you've been around for a while you probably know that I'm a massive mythology nerd. <laughs> I love 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 my mythology from all different parts of the world. I love to learn about what ancient cultures thought made the world go round because I feel like there's there's a, a level of truth and symbolism in that that can be really powerful. Um, so I found this book in the th exchange world mythology in bite-sized chunks by Mark Daniels. So looking through the kind of content page it looks like it really gives you like the quickest like little introduction to some of the mythology all around the world and I really like the idea of that of being able to kind of get a quick summary around okay this is what the Sumerians believe in because then that it kind of I feel like this will act as like a starting point for how I will then go forward and which mythologies I want to find further literature about and learn a little bit more about so I thought this would be a good like guide for where to go the cover is really cool too um, and then the last one, I only got four books, I restrained myself very well. If you've been around for a while you might also know that Robin Hobb is one of my favourite authors, she's my favourite fantasy author, and I found this really really old copy of The Ship of Destiny, it's like some sort of old mass market paperback. Um, the Ship of Destiny is the conclusion to one of my favourite trilogies by her, The Live Ship Traders. The Live Ship Traders and The Rainwell Chronicles are my favourites. And this paperback was put out on the year I was born. So I'm always looking to expand the collection of Robin Hobb that I have in my own library because I read it from a public library when I was younger. There's definitely a lot of variation in the editions that I have now, that's for sure. This just feels so nice to hold. It feels very old and mm, it's gonna be juicy to read. But yes, there you go. So these were the four books that I picked up and exchanged. Um, I'm very happy with the exchange. I've taken out books that I didn't enjoy, wasn't going to read, for other people would enjoy and now I have four new books that I am very excited to read. So yes, take it from me, find your local book exchange store, get your butt in there, it is such a good feeling to be able to clear off your shelves and bring new things in. For all of these is $22 out of my pocket and a cleaner mind <laughs> from what I got rid of. So yes, I very very much so recommend doing this for yourself. Yeah, but that's kind of it for today. Or oh, I'll do what I usually do and tell you what I'm currently reading. Oh, it's been kind of hanging out here in the back of the video. So I am currently reading the first book in the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson, The Final Empire. I think I've read this before when I was really, really young, but we've got the whole trilogy here. So I thought I would give it a shot and I am really enjoying it. The magic system is just incredible and it definitely reads like very classic high fantasy. Like this is the beginning of this genre, it feels like. I don't know if it actually is, but that's the vibe I'm getting. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of my philosophy of, of only keeping books that I feel like will give me joy to see after I've read them and not keeping books that don't. Do you guys do that? Do you not do that? What's your philosophy? But yes, feel free to stick around if you enjoyed this video. I hope you all have a lovely day and I will see you all next time. Bye!